So you can guess, but just as before, see the architecture, we're using BigQuery, we're seeing, using Big Lake, Dataproc, mm -hmm. all the things. So to start off with, first, we actually populate a bunch of those more audio files in a cloud storage bucket. All right, a lot of incidents. I don't know what's going on here. But there's a lot of incidents we created. So we're going to start with these. Again, these are just audio files. Right. We're going to do something more interesting with them. So to work with them, I've gone ahead and created a new object table in Big Lake. So what this lets me do is it lets me manipulate unstructured data in SQL, just as if I was working with data in a traditional schema. So here I created that object table. You can see when I run the query, I'll get some stuff back. And what's cool is it's not just listing it in there, it's actually refreshing this. And it's constantly pulling in those media files, and now I have a reference to them I mean, in this just, table. Just take seconds. I'm such a huge fan of how this big length model, it simplifies the security operations of working with data like right. this. What, what Richard's showing is called access delegation. So right now, you only need permission to query the big lake table in order to work with data. That means you don't need direct access to the cloud storage. You can actually swap that out with an underlying different storage layer. You could it could be anything, it could be S3, you could be on Azure Blob Storage, and all the permissions you need are just the access to data big lake. I hope everybody caught that, that's a big deal when I can be swapping out that underlying storage layer. Bring your own blob, as I, I never say, why am I saying that here, but that's something you would say. So the first thing we want to do before we can actually transform this data is get this to, into a format, let's transcribe it so we can actually access it more easily. So I've got a big query function here that goes ahead, you can see next, speech to text function, this is actually transcribing the data from the audio file and putting it in BigQuery. It uses the unified speech ML model to give us some high quality multilingual output. So we can go ahead, we have that qu query down here, just in case you don't believe me. Live, live, please work right. Yeah, we don't have trust right. yet. All right, there we go. <laughs> so it's there, so let's go ahead and invoke that. So I want to run this function, so it's going to go through everything in that object table, listen to the audio, and then transcribe it for us. I probably need some waiting music. There you go. Thank you. How you doing? I mean, seconds feel like minutes. Yeah. That's relativity, right? There we go. We didn't have time for a dad joke there. That was good. <laughs> so if we go ahead and, and select from here, what we should have Success. is a bunch of audio transcription. So using this model, look, we're, we got all of the audio from those files now right there. Amazing. So you don't need any complex code, no ML, there was no ML hacking done on stage today. You don't even need to leave the data warehouse. Uh, do you have Duet AI enabled in this BigQuery project? I'm here for you. Oh. Yeah, I absolutely do. Okay, so let's see if you can get it to find like a specific type of safety incident, like maybe all the reports that say injury or something. Right, because I'm terrible at writing SQL. So when I can just give it a me comment too. and have it give me a query statement, that's, uh, that's making everybody better. It'll also give me some options. I might look and say, that's not the one I want, or hey, that looks close. All right, let's pick that one, run that. And what it should give me then, I'm querying that, and I'm getting only two records back, because we have in the injury somewhere in that audio transcription, which is awesome. Slick, slick, slick. Yeah, so notice how we figured out the table structure. I didn't tell it anything, right? We went from unstructured blobs of audio data to something that we as quasi-SQL developers can actually get real insight on just a couple of minutes. I mean, we can set the bar higher than that, Richard. We can get after it. We should, you know, put on our analyst hat. The hell's an analyst hat? Is it like I mean, a fedora? It's like cowboy or Carmen San Diego, right. something like That's that. Fine. So <laughs> let's see if we can transform this data into something more useful. I want to get out one of the BigQuery Studio notebooks for this workload. Ooh. Yeah, buckle up. So in this notebook, we can interact with structured and unstructured data in a single data frame using BigQuery data frames. This provides a pandas interface, so, and it pushes that work to BigQuery instead of making us have a big, large instance sitting around with tons of gigs of memory. Right. So in this example, we're going to use BigQuery data frames, but look, I could use Spark data frames if that was a better fit. Back to your open source thing, it's just about using the right compute for the right workload. I get, and I hope you are too, so excited about this combination of open source and managed tooling. Like, yep. Give me Spark as the execution engine if that's what I want alongside BigQuery as a data repository or if I want to fine tune an LLM and PyTorch, you know, cloud TPUs now support that. I mean, I could bring in data from Apache Iceberg now if I want to. Simmer down, big man. I mean, it's, it's fun. A, it's a lot, I'm super pumped. I'm going to make you even happier though, which is, uh -huh. is uh, troublesome. I have some data in Apache Iceberg right here. And so what I want to do, I've got this loaded in a cloud storage bucket. 
And I want to then go ahead and take the output of our data, also going back into Apache Iceberg format to keep with our lake principles here. Eight. So we have this managed table, terrific. We've got some data in from that table. If I pull out this data frame reference, we can actually see the data that's in here. It's a list of supervisors. Terrific. Let's go ahead and put that back in there. Stop breaking stuff. We'll go ahead and run that, load that into the data frame. So there we have our structured data. Mm -hmm. We also have that unstructured data, right? All that audio stuff. Right. And so we've got that all together, which is terrific. And then we'd be able to join this later. So I could join this information. I could filter it down, see which warehouses have which incidents and so forth. And then even identify the risky supervisors by figuring out which supervisors were in which ones of these facilities. And look at Stuart and Kyle, it's time for a little extra training. We can switch over to Vertex AI. Okay. Look at this, this is the same notebook. So this is the same notebook we're looking at, same data frame, same code, all of it, but now I'm using Colab Enterprise in one environment, seamless. Can you call Palm? Can you extend that with Vertex and AI? Do you summarization from there? Yeah, so let's, let's actually invoke the Palm API so we can summarize maybe that lengthy summary there and get back a nice little description that we can figure out which factories are a hot mess. Oh, there we go. I think you showed me the little magic wand button before. Oh, Look at that. I like the wand, you know. It doesn't take a lot to please me. There we go. <laughs> and so if we come back, we see there's a summary. I'm getting a single sentence summary of what might be a really long transcription. Right. And I'm doing all this in the data frame. Again, I'm not leaving my tool set. So everybody take a minute to appreciate what just happened. We pulled in that Vertex integration, no containers or extra sidecars. We didn't stand up some giant model or run it on a bespoke massive instance in order to get it close to our data. It's, it's just right there. It's waiting in the platform for us. It's an API a call away. And you can make that endpoint available in the AppSheet app from Alice earlier, right? That's right, Alice is excited. We could, it's just an API endpoint. So using AI to put our data to work is the driving impulse behind so many of the conversations that I'm having right now. And I, I just can't tell you. I can't tell you how excited I am to continue blowing people's minds with these features. This is what is gonna change businesses everywhere.